Hello guys and thank you for joining me for uh, this new uh, episode. I decided to build the Heinkel 112B produced by RS Models from uh, Czech Republic in a uh, 172nd scale. The kit has two marking options, uh, Romanian and German. The main reason I choose this kit is because it can be built as a Romanian fighter. In this side of the box you have uh, another interesting models produced by uh, RS models. The opposite end of the box is displaying the same marking options, while this edge provides more information about the producer and distributor. The part that interested me the most was the availability of these two Romanian color schemes. Now let's open the box. The box opens from one side. Many modelers are not considering this as the ideal solution, but this kit comprises only few parts and I don't think there is any risk of damage. As you can see, the kit has only one screw molded in grey plastic and cut to fit into the box. The calls are looking nice with good colors and printed in the register. Together with the decals is the canopy. It looks a little bit foggy. As you can see, it's very well molded. The thickness seems to be okay, but it's not crystal clear. So this is going to be perhaps one of the main problems in this kit. Anyhow, I'll try to polish it out to see if I can get a, a, a better shine to it, a better transparency to it. Till then. I'm going to put it back. Here we have a, a short history of the aircraft. Specification for the aircraft. Uh, at the back of the leaflet we have some uh, recommendations from the producer regarding three other different kits. And finally the assembly, as you can see it comprises only three steps, so uh, we have the screw layout, as you could see, you didn't see it yet, but you're going to see very soon the screw was cut here, to fit in uh, into the uh, box, this is our clear part, and uh, then the assembly, simple, three steps, now everything is, uh, is about the fitting here, if there are any alignment issue, issues, well, designers of this leaflet, they didn't pay uh, too much time doing uh, color schemes and such, you just render it black and white, but uh, the good thing about it is those shaded areas, as you can see black here, black here, represent the way those that were, were the joining surfaces with uh, easy a little bit the assembly process. For the seat for instance, although you don't have locator pins, this edge supposed to stay here and the back of the uh, the other edge the upper edge of the seat supposed to come here right under the uh, pillow it doesn't work for uh, all sub assemblies for instance fellows do some guesswork to see what they're going to fit but they're not going to be too visible at the end so it's not a big big uh, issue eventually the only option the, uh, that the kit offers is uh, between uh, the uh, German version which is a um, 112B0 and the Romanian variant which is a 112B2 those two versions they had a different engine so um, the exhaust stock in um, German version 
he has just on stop well while the uh, Romanian version has six stacks each except in this 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 difference everything is very uh, is, is identical for the two versions yeah I, I would say judging based only on instructions that this is going to be an easy kit but everything depends on uh, the quality of the uh, molding and uh, how many uh, gaps I'm going to have to fill this is a short run kit so uh, any, anything is possible I may have a very good surprise and an excellent fit or I might have to struggle now let's see the uh, parts into the box they come into a resealing bag I'm not sure if the glue is going to be uh, active after I, I, I open the uh, bag but yeah, now is the time to open it because I'm going to start building soon enough. So, this is our uh, sprue rail. Uh, so, the main parts are uh, in the exterior. So, we have the two. Uh, Fuselage, half, uh, fuselage halves, uh, we have the uh, lower part of the wings, we have the upper part of the wings. I'm not sure about the uh, landing gear, if they were boxed or not. On the stabilizers, there is some, uh, yes, some nice detail. I'm not sure how, um, how much camera is helping me but the surface detail is not as bad there is some fine little detail some uh, uh, recess lines some more uh, riveting in here they look quite okay the cowlings I'm going to use this version also they have fine rivets around but as a general note the plastic looks a little bit scratched yes perhaps the uh, molds are quite old a little bit flash but nothing to uh, get scary for the uh, German version the studs are very nice they are pretty old so uh, they're going to be uh, looking quite good pedal frames the pedal supports they are the uh, the worst as you can see and uh, landing gear detail should be okay so generally speaking I am uh, happy with the uh, molding not too much issues now the um, roughness of the uh, plastic surface is not a good huge concern uh, because it's not going to be a metallic finish it's going to be a light gray finish and a light blue finish with some yellow perhaps those uh, little imperfections are not going to be seen after uh, a little bit of uh, polishing also some um, panel lines perhaps need to be uh, prescribed I'm going to see if maybe I'm going to do it and also some river uh, detail which was so nicely replicated on the on the fuselage hulls they are not replicated on, into the um, this the radiator part is not going to be visible too much it has a small sink in here but also doesn't uh, worry me too much perhaps I could reward this part but I'm not very much concerned about it this one here it's also an easy fix normally one detail I'm not very very happy with it is the dashboard which looks quite bad but again my canopy is going to be closed and if you remember no uh, raising parts no um, photo edge parts nothing additional just the bare plastic oh I, I almost uh, omitted the wheels are um, weighted and this is a nice touch and the hubs and the tire detail it's not that bad is better on the uh, outside than uh, on the inside but otherwise it's, uh, it's okay and another um, thing the interior interior is I think quite reasonably depicted for uh, the expectation of on this kind of kit those pin marks they should interfere with the build, uh, building so I don't think it's very important to remove at least this one but 
those inside the uh, pulleys they need to be removed because I'm sure dry fit is not going to be yeah see the two parts are rocking and they are not, not even touching each other so those those pins they have to be uh, certainly removed for a better fit yeah on the back side of the parts there are some uh, ugly ejection marks and this one again this one yeah nothing too uh, too scary inside detail for the uh, wheel covers are, are quite good and yeah bits of flash that can be easily removed and uh, well, nothing too bad the, the only thing that I uh, insist is the, uh, the fitting as you can see I not even do the first dry fitting because of those pin marks and the uh, angle the parts are molded but uncertain this have to go so that is for now going to uh, start uh, building this model so uh, we're going to see what we're going to get the assembly and the painting are going to follow in the second part i intend to do this video in um, two episodes let's see how it's going to uh, go the painting scheme is, is fairly easy i'm not intending to do any super detailing i'm going to stick with uh, what is in, into the box so um yes that should be a, a nice little project We're going to talk a little bit about the history of this aircraft. Very many times it was dubbed as the forgotten fighter, but at this time it was a quite performant aircraft as we going to see in the following moments. The production of this aircraft is related to the contest initiated by Hermann Göring in his position of chief of RLM, which in uh, 1933 initiated a uh, contest and in May 1934 RLM issue a specification for a single seat interceptor fighter to replace the outdated Henkel 51 and Arado 68 biplanes. The requirements called for a single seat, single engine, all metal monoplane with a maximum speed of 214 miles per hour at a ceiling of 4000 meters. The main contestant was Arado AR80 V2, built, built from a mix of metal and wood powered by a uh, Rolls-Royce Kerstel 5 engine which was considered an outsider from the very beginning of the contest. Another contendant was Messerschmitt BF 109B1 which as we know have won the contest for uh, RLM. Further on Focke Wolf came with FW 159V2 was a very nice uh, design but the parasol configuration was already obsolete in 1935 and also had some landing gear structural uh, failures eventually Henkel proposed Henkel 112V1 with uh, large semi-elliptical wings very clean design it took long time for uh, Henkel to design different version of the prototype from which 112V9 was an excellent aircraft. It was very close to a message maybe a 409, but unfortunately for the factory, it was too late. Nonetheless, Henkel is trying to put the aircraft into production and is looking for uh, external clients. Uh, he has very many uh, proposals, Spain, Turkey, uh, Yugoslav, Hungary. They are all interested in, in buying the aircraft. Also, Henkel makes proposals to Finland and uh, Netherlands but most of these deals they never come to an end Japan is buying a few aircrafts but their pilots will uh, prefer the Mitsubishi plane similar fate in a Yugoslavian deal with where Yugoslavia prefers hurricane fighter in Finland Fokker was chosen before the Henkel design Eventually, the most interested uh, client seems to be Romania, which was an acute need of fresh aircraft because their operational status was around 30%. At the beginning of Second World War was very imminent and Romania was in a very fragile position, uh, having enemies almost all around. Most notable Hungary, 
and um, Soviet Union. So Romanian are desperate to uh, to buy as many aircraft as uh, they can. So they are passing favorably the deal with uh, Heinkel, and they place an order for 24 aircraft, which was afterwards raised to 30. So by a twist of fate, Romania becomes the main operator of Heinkel 112B, B1 and B2, having two fighting squadrons, the 51st and the 52nd, equipped with the type. The fighting record was not spectacular because the way of the aircraft was deployed, mainly in mission of protection and ground attack. Anyhow, at least one aircraft has survived the war and uh, can be seen afterwards with the Romanian rondels after 1945. Before moving on to the build, I would like to talk a little bit about the uh, my choice of uh, colors on, on this particular aircraft. Uh, I'm going to go for the uh, light grey scheme which is characteristic for the first months of the war in the Soviet Union when Romania joined the uh, Axis. Now the second scheme is very similar to the German aircraft, basically they are identical, they are factory painted. But regarding to this scheme that I want to represent in my build, there is a lot of controversy. I'm not quite sure and I couldn't find any photograph that can identify the undercolor of being RLM-65. According to uh, my sources, the entire aircraft was painted light gray. Now the second question related to light gray is that the art box refers to it as RLM-02 or 63. But again, according to aircraft in action series, those aircraft they were painted by a factory in light gray and then uh, hastily impressed into service by the Romanian army just over painting the, um, the German markings and applying their uh, identification numbers. Now the common practice in uh, Romanian Air Force was to maintain the original paint of the aircraft until the first major overhaul when it was replaced, uh, replaced by national colors, usually Romanian olive drab, Romanian dark green something very similar with this call. If that assumption is correct, it means that the aircraft was not in the RLM-02 with a shade of grey to it, but the plane, or uh, what is referred also as being silver grey, very light grey, or uh, also Lufthansa grey. Another thing that occurs to me right now is that this aircraft is supposed to belong to 51st Fighting Squadron 5th Fighter Group, which is correct for the uh, 1941, but my, my concern uh, relates to the, to the number. If this aircraft belongs to uh, Aviator Theodor Moscow, the number known is number 13, as is clearly identified by uh, a photograph after the action which brought him to victories over a Soviet airfield. So the insignia seems to be accurate, but not the number. In other renditions of the aircraft and uh, different books on uh, online media, I've seen the aircraft sporting two yellow bands, which was also a common practice in the Romanian Air Force, but I haven't seen any photograph about the Henkel 112 to indicate clearly that it had the yellow stripes overdoing. So if I put all this information together, I would say that the correct scheme for this aircraft would be overall gray with no light blue undercolor and no yellow stripes on the wings and with number 13. The correct number will be black 13. The yellow, uh, yellow calling and the yellow nose, they are correct, also the band is correct. The yellow tip of the uh, wings also correct. So let's go on and build this kit, thank you very much for watching, if you'd like to see the second series regarding the build and the painting of the aircraft, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. Also your comments are highly appreciated and any uh, criticism that can uh, help me to improve my work would be more than welcome. Thank you very much, see you next time.